So I know this is people have kind of talked about this topic um, a lot. And this is something that I do want to kind of explore a little bit more. So I, it, it, it involves doing a little bit more of in-depth research. But there's been this wave, uh, particularly from I don't even want to say the conservative side. Right. Uh, what I think it is, is it's a wave of rich, white fucking people, whether they're rich, white liberals, rich, white conservatives. They're all kind of on the same side of this. Right. Um, it's the fact that teaching the the actual history of America, the racist history of America is controversial now. Right. This notion of the critical race theory. Uh, which, you know, I, I don't know the exact wordings of the critical race theory or what it is or whatnot. Uh, I've had somebody kind of explain it to me over on Twitter. Basically, it's like teaching the inherent racism that exists in America. <laughs> like, that's all it is. Uh, because the way it's taught and the way that I think, like, kids get indoctrinated into this capitalist nationalist system that we have in this country is that racism ended with slavery. And then they recropped up in, in various different things, but that those were just loud minorities that we just kind of had to deal with. And then the civil rights movement happened, and that made everything better. And then Obama showed up, and then we killed racism. We took it out back and shot it in the face with the shotgun of love, which is not a thing that should exist. Uh, love should not be fired out of any sort of projectile uh, that is, that is the kind of love I think the Joker, uh, would, <laughs> would express. Uh, and I don't think that is the type of love that we should aspire to. Sidebar, I never fucking understood the whole, uh, you know, people that kind of romanticize, uh, the Joker and Harley Quinn relationship. Uh, it's toxic, it's vicious, it's fucked up. And that should not be your aspiration for a relationship. I'm sorry if that's what you think it is, that, that that is what you want. But if that is what you want, if you want like a Joker Harley dynamic, you should definitely get therapy because that is something deep rooted because that's a very abusive and toxic and awful relationship. OK, back to the main point. So, again, we, we saw uh, just a few days ago in Virginia, in Loudoun County, and I have family that lives in Loudoun County. My cousin goes to school in Loudoun County, right? Like, he's this skinny little Indian kid, just like me. And I, I kind of have to think, like, what kind of education is he getting? Like, is he learning the truth about the country that he is in? You know, the country that he is a citizen of? Because he was born here. Uh, yeah, he was born here. <laughs> um, you know, and these people had like their end of the year meeting and they were talking about teaching race in schools, right? You got to teach their because it's a part of American history. It's not like it isn't, it's still a part of American history. And so they're trying to teach people, teach kids like, Hey, this is sort of the things that have happened across um, American history. And this is how race plays a, a role in that. And that's important. Uh, and when that got brought up, there were, oh man, I dropped my pen. Sorry, it's a weird crutch to just have on my hand. Um, but they, but like these, <laughs> these predominantly rich white people freaked out. <laughs> they lost their fucking shit, right? And this, and critical race theory is a conservative dog whistle. It is, it is a conservative dog whistle. I'm not gonna fucking say that it isn't. Mo more, more often than not, it is conservatives that are coming out. And making the claim that this is toxic, this is negative, this is evil, this is not right, this is lies, you know, and this is coming, I mean, this is coming from states like Florida and Virginia and Georgia, uh, you know, Texas, uh, where Texas a couple years ago in, in like 2016, 2015, 2016, 2017, wanted to change the word slaves to workers. And my friend Stuart Huff has a joke where he goes, why don't we just change the word history to bullshit? Because that's exactly what they're advocating to do, right? To say that racism doesn't exist in America is is just putting your the wool over your eyes. It's living in a fucking eyes wide shut nonsense party, 
what reality are you living in? But again, that's what rich white people do. They don't see what's going on out there. They don't see racial disparities. Their community, they live in gated communities half the time. Or in giant fucking cul-de-sac neighborhoods. So, so let's do this. Let's go, let's go into the truth of, of American history, right? The truth is America is absolutely a fucking racist country because America is an imperialist country. And regardless of how you shake it, imperialism needs to use racism to achieve its goals because imperialism is a consequence of capitalism. That's what it is. Imperialism is a consequence of capitalism. And it's very hard to refute that. Capitalism is a system of looking for infinite wealth on a finite planet. So when you run out of shit to exploit in your country, you start looking outward to be like, how do we fucking exploit other countries and take its resources for our financial gain? That's why capitalism thrives on war it thrives on coups it thrives on manipulating democracies which then don't become democracies because they always lead to authoritarianism because you installed somebody nobody voted for this person so in order to justify these wars in order to justify you know, taking troops or using your intelligence community to install puppet leaders or manipulate certain other leaders in various other countries to then make deals to, you know, send resources to America and make everything revolve around the American paradigm, you have to dehumanize a whole group of people. And this is this is something that America does non motherfucking stop. They do, they it, this just doesn't end in this country. They do it using race. They use, do it using gender. They do it using ideology. They u do it using religion. Right? It's all about the manipulation game so that you can exploit not just your own people because they've already exploited your people. And, there's, and they've ran through the resources that they can accumulate here and they don't know how to make more and they don't know how to put out the fires. When people in manufacturing started asking for more money, you know, people in industry started like legitimately started asking for more money. That's when it was like, well, let's go to this country that advocates for slavery and install a guy that's going to make more slavery happen so that we can use them, outsource the jobs and make more money for ourselves. And then we'll control politicians who then will legislate to let us make even more money on top of that. That's how America operates. So race is an, an important part of that to dehumanize and devalue entire groups of people so that it's okay to inflict as much violence as you want on them. And then all of that comes back home to roost. Most of American history has been warfare. Some kind of warfare. Hardly ever has America been in peace. Hardly ever. This is a nation that needs war to thrive. And war is, a, again, a, a pillar of capitalism. When you devalue certain groups of people, especially people that are not white, that's called racism. When you say that only the westernized white countries know how to deal with African, Middle Eastern, Asian, and... Indian countries because the, the Anglo-Saxon white dude knows the best, right? That's racism. I remember calling out a woman in Wilmington once who then very obstinately sat in the front row uh, in a venue that there were like 10 or 12 people in. Um, and, uh, she comes up to me and she talks to me about India cause she found out I was an Indian comic. I'd 
Uh, I think I'd gotten like some minor amount of press. Like they wrote a little snippet about me. And she saw that and came with the show and she talked to me about India. And I was like, oh, yeah, I grew up there. And then she starts explaining to me how India works. <laughs> and she was an affluent white woman. Right. Dressed to the nines, expensive purse, that sort of maybe I'm making a judgment call about her wealth, uh, you know, but it seemed like she was an affluent white woman. And I looked at her and I was like, you know, I was born there. Right. And she was like, well, you came here so young. How old were you? Five or six. And I was like, I was eight. Like, I, I know how to make memories. And I've been there since multiple times. I was like, I know how my own country works. And then she got into an argument. She was like, well, where, where are you from? And I said, Bombay. And she goes, Mumbai. And I said, no, Bombay. And she goes, well, they changed it in the mid 90s. And I was like, probably. I, I actually don't know when the name change occurred. And she pulled it up on Wikipedia and was like 94, 95 or something. And I was like, yeah, nobody called it that. Everybody called it Bombay. And she goes, well, I guess I guess you don't know that much about your like. And then she started like getting all happy and puffy with me. And I was like, are you seriously like trying to explain? I lived there. I know what people called the city that I was born in. I still go back there and most people refer to it as Bombay. <laughs> because a lot of people grew up with it being called that. So it's difficult for them to make that change. And I was like, hey, can you not explain to me how my own country works? Because it's really rude and condescending. And quite frankly, it's getting it's starting to become a little racist. She goes, no, 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 it's not racist. And I was like, yeah, you're explaining it to me like I'm an idiot. I'm not. I, I appreciate the conversation here, but like, can we move? Can, can we get through this here? Like, I'm telling you what my experience has been. And she got pissy with me because she didn't want to accept the fact that she was demeaning somebody about their own fucking country. And she and she felt like she knew better because she was a white lady. That's that upholding white supremacy. And she was very liberal. I love this place. It was, it was the place was called the Juggling Gypsy. It's a weirdo fucking like circus cafe. The venue is awesome. It's a really cool venue in Wilmington. If you live in Wilmington, go check out the Juggling Gypsy, man. It's fucking great. But like that's how people treat minorities because they're they're taught that only the white man can help these minorities. All oh, these poor brown people just don't know any better. That's how it's taught. It's taught through the the white supremacist lens. Even the education system, however benign it sounds, has a white supremacist bend to it. War is 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 also white supremacist. It's white. It's it's a white nation trying to dominate primarily brown countries in South America, in the Middle East. In the next story we'll cover. I'll, I'm going to talk about how America is influencing India. This country was built on dissent. And, but it's only dissent if it comes from a specific group of people, right? And look, if you're if you're a white person, which I, I know there's some out there, uh, statistically speaking, like it would be crazy if there were like no white people watching the show. Uh, here's the thing. It's like I'm not talking about all white people here. Obviously not. I'm talking about the rich white people that can't handle the fact that the country that gave them their crazy amounts of wealth, that wealth was acquired through just pure fucking evil and exploitation and dominance. But that's how capitalism operates. That's how imperialism works. And that's why imperialism and capitalism need racism to work, right? So even, even if you're not a rich white person, you are taught that the reason why you are not a rich white person is not because these other rich white people have accumulated their fucking wealth at the top and aren't distributing it back down. They're trying to get more and more wealth to themselves. It's because black people are are, 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 are are taking your wealth and the immigrants are taking your wealth. These people that threw, threw a tantrum in, in, in Loudoun County, in Georgia, in Florida, about teaching the true racist history of this country 
I don't even understand exactly how th this situation represents the racist history of America. Uh, the Loudoun County one specifically had um, sheriffs there. The, the sheriff department showed up. And they had to, like, arrest a bunch of people because they were going to start a riot. And what did they do? They talked to them nicely. Hey, Larry, I'm sorry. I know the meeting's over. The meeting's not over. It's over when I say it's over. I, I Look, I get it. It's okay. And they took them out. Had that been a black person, whether it was a black person of, of affluence or not, they would have been beaten to the ground, tasered, possibly shot, dragged out of their hog tie. I mean, the list would go on as to what they would do. Just even even them, them like not wanting the, the way they're reacting to this proves the reason why we need to teach race in America. And even that is just the tip of the iceberg. We can prove that racism still exists, exists in America and needs to be taught so that we can, you know, the next generation of kids coming out can actually do something to improve the world. The endless cases of police brutality prove this. The fact that we ignore uh, the Tulsa race massacre and call it a riot, it was a bunch of white people rioting. Call it the Tulsa white people riot because black people got money. That would be accurate if you want to call it a riot. But it's a race massacre. They fucking murdered people. Indiscriminately. What about the true history of the Black Panthers? That's a part of American history. Yeah, we learn about MLK, but we don't learn that MLK was an anti-war socialist. Yeah, we learn about Malcolm X, but we don't learn that Malcolm X was an anti-war socialist. And now fucking Florida, <laughs> Florida wants people, it, it basically indoctrinate them into patriotism. Ignore the reality. We don't learn about the move bombings. Why minorities are scapegoated to ensure that more rich people are, stay rich. And the and the the reason is psychological, right? The reason why these parents are having a conniption over all of this is psychological. And part, so I mean, part of it is propaganda. Part of it is is, is absolutely that you know we 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 have propaganda. We, Americans are the most propagandized people on the planet. That's ju that's just the reality of some things, you know. We we have a person we we have Joe Biden in charge right now who is just the like one of the worst fucking politicians that has ever walked the planet. And and liberals want you to believe that he is basically like the greatest president that's ever. Oh, he's the next FDR. Really was did FDR try to incarcerate as many black people as possible because they enjoyed the benefits of smoking a plant? Really? Like, did he try to cancel all social programs? But there you go, right? We're erasing this history. So even, that's why I'm saying it's not a conservative or liberal matter. It's a rich white person matter. That's who's resisting this. They can be liberal or conservative because liberals don't want to actually accept that there's this historic systemic racism that has existed and their favorite politician is part of, 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 of the contribution to this. So they don't want you to learn this shit. Conservatives don't want you to learn this shit because, you know, it makes America look bad when you say that it's super fucking racist. And of course it does, because it is. Racism and white supremacy in this country are poisons. They're poisons. And these rich white people don't want to fucking believe that they're bad people, that that they themselves are 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 willfully spreading the poison across the country. So to them, they their whole worldview will become shattered through their kids learning the actual fucking history of this country. And psychologically, they're not prepared for it.
they don't want to believe that they're bad people. And look, you're all, you would only be a bad person is if all of this information was presented to you and you go, huh, let's not talk about it anymore or pretend it's not there or claim that it's lies. That would make you a bad person. What you're doing is making you a bad person. Learning that stuff and saying, wow, that's really terrible. You know what? I am a white person in a position of privilege. Uh, I'm going to use a portion of my wealth that I have inherited through this exploitation, and I'm going to redistribute it to you know uh, low-income people. Maybe I'll see if, if, if people in Loudoun County or somewhere in Georgia or Florida are, are struggling with rent or making food, and I'm going to just take care of that for them. I can maybe sh shell out $1,500 to $2,500 a month helping out a couple of people not get evicted. You know, maybe I'll pay off somebody's debt. The next time maybe I go to a party and someone says something fucked up about Asians or black people, I'll, I'll say, hey, no, that's not okay. Or if I go to a comedy club and someone makes a, a, a low-hanging fruit racist joke, I'm, I'm not going to support that comedian anymore or that establishment that hires that comedian, and I'm going to make it known. I'm going to use my position of power for good instead of evil. But they don't want to take that step because to them, just challenging the beliefs that they have lived with in and of itself is a complete shift of their worldview, and that is something that they can't handle. The problem is, now it seems like it's a shock, right? Oh man, all of this information is coming out so quickly. Last year we saw the largest, you know, civil rights movement since uh MLK come out and and hit the streets. And my goodness, that would that must have been such a shock to these rich white people that didn't even know that this sort of stuff existed. And part of that might be true, but the reality is that it's not. These movements have existed for for decades now. The reason why it's a shock to them is because they've ignored it. That's not the fault of activists. That's not the fault of people marching on the streets. That's not the fault of any commentators trying to uh, enlighten people with this information. That is the fault of the individual that decided to ignore history to be comfortable with themselves and to be comfortable with the fact that their wealth comes from capitalist exploitation, which uses racism to gain more wealth. And I'm sorry to be a little harsh about this, but fucking get over it, man. You've had, you guys have had so much time to get on board little by little, little by little, you could have gotten on board. What we are looking at is the five stages of grief to American exceptionalism. American exceptionalism is a lie. Outright. It's a fucking lie. And this is, the, this is anger. This is stage one. This is the first time, because their kids have to learn this now, this is the first time that it's actually right in front of their faces and they can't ignore it. And they're not prepared to deal with it. I mean, they're never going to be prepared to deal with it, but they just don't fucking want to. All right, let's look at your comments. Holly says it includes includes the blue checks. Yeah, the blue checks do this too, right? Post racism after Obama. Uh, and, and yeah, exactly. Holly, Holly says uh, imperialism and capitalism need racism and they need identity politics. Um, Holly says, try never. No, I can't remember a peacetime. You know, I don't know if I particularly remember, um, America being in peace either. Uh, I think, I think most people think the nineties were that, um, but that was because we weren't really talking about warfare a whole lot. Uh, you know, the Gulf happened. And then after that, when Clinton came into office, we weren't talking about Sarajevo. We weren't talking about what was going on in Africa. 
the only thing we remember Clinton for is uh, a blowjob and a surplus. We don't remember him for the for the uh, war on on black people in this country. Cynical girl, welcome to the stream. Uh, <laughs> fucking Florida, get me out of here. I know. Uh, I wish we could. We're we're we're, we're trying. Um. <laughs> Ali says, but they create jobs. The rich white people create jobs. Yes, yes, they do. And why do they create jobs? So that they can have more people to exploit. <laughs> I'm going to bring in Aiden's, com Aiden's comment here. His hashtag all white people. <laughs> yeah. I, this is the death of American exceptionalism. That's really all it is. And uh, and unfortunately, it's not going quietly into that good night. It's going to put up a fight. It's going to be it's going to have to go through the five stages of grief. Um, and eventually it'll it'll have to accept that it's not exceptional. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now. Uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the Merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gostola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.